Gethsemane Parce Fili in et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Today's commemoration, St. Catherine Drexel, um, born in Philadelphia, 1858, daughter of an extremely wealthy investment banker, Francis Drexel. And so they're Catholics. In 1858, that wasn't an easy time to be Catholic. A lot of Protestants, a lot of anti-Catholic sentiment, and then um, this, this uh, fantastically wealthy banker is, is giving a good example. Uh, he had three daughters, uh, one of whom was Catherine, and they were given private tutors. And her father set an excellent example for her as a young girl. He spent 30 minutes of mental prayer every evening uh, yeah, in, in prayer, 30 minutes a day, which is what I, I say all the time, right? He doubled it. I say 15 minutes, he did 30 minutes. I'm sure he did spiritual reading as well. Uh, her mother died shortly after she was born, and her father remarried, and her, her stepmother was equally pious. In fact, this, this, this stepmother uh, would open her home, the, the, the Drexel family home. She would open it once a week to poor persons, and she would distribute food, clothing, and provide rental assistance. Um, and she, in fact, her mother knew, her stepmother knew that some poor persons were, all, were poor because of circumstances. It, it was just, they'd fallen on hard times and they were too ashamed or too embarrassed to come for alms. So her mother would send out like her spies and find out who needed assistance and then she would give it to them secretly so they wouldn't, they wouldn't feel ashamed. And in fact, her mother uh, said to her, uh, she had this little saying, kindness can be unkind if it leaves a sting behind. And so she was very sensitive to the feelings of others. So, uh, so young Catherine Drexel had this, this excellent example from her parents. And I would say, right, that is so important, right? Even though we ourselves may feel like, uh, you know, we're, we're not very good examples or, I'm, you know, we want to be good, but we have a lot of flaws or maybe we had a bad upbringing and we're doing the best we can for our children. Uh, you know, just like uh, uh, St. Casimir, it, it wasn't his father. It was, it was John Douglas. It was that priest who inspired him. Right, and, and, and uh, so we, we never know the influence we may have on other people. Uh, Catherine Drexel is the saint and not her mother or her stepmother or her father, but if it hadn't been for her father and stepmother, would she have been a saint, right? So you never know, right? Maybe somebody else gets the spike, but you get the set, right? So, so you, you're, you're the assist, somebody else gets the goal. Whatever, whatever analogy you wanna use, you don't have to be a saint, but maybe you're gonna be inspiring a saint, right? So let, let's keep that in mind. So Catherine Drexel and her sisters are traveling many times to Europe, all throughout the United States. They had quite a bit of experience in upper class social circles. Um, and uh, so despite that, right, despite being in high society, traveling all over to Europe, the United States and so on, uh, when Catherine Drexel's stepmother becomes terminally ill with cancer, uh, Catherine helps her. She assists her for three years. She helps her mother in this terminal illness. And they spend a lot of money and a lot of time and they got the best doctors and Catherine Drexel finds out at the end of three years, her stepmother dies, no amount of money can save you from that, right? Money cannot buy health, it can't really, it, it can't save your life sometimes, and, and our life will end. So that was another great, um, well, a good example of, of uh, piety from Catherine, but also left her with um, the mortality of man and the emptiness of riches and wealth. Um, and she, uh, because of these travels, she um, also, uh, the Civil War had recently ended, and Catherine saw the plight of black Americans who had formerly been slaves, and also Native American Indians in the West. And so because she'd grown up, right, helping poor persons in Philadelphia, now she sees entire classes of people that are in need of assistance, uh, blacks and Indians. So she, um, uh, she starts being, I would say, investing in charitable resources, and her father, I, I neglected to mention how much he was worth, um, when he, he died in 1885, and Catherine was 27, she wasn't married yet, and he left his three daughters $15.5 million each in 1885. Uh, today, that would be about, uh, worth about $400 million a piece. So, so he was a billionaire in 1858, essentially. And uh, he, he, it was in a trust, and his daughters, they each received, they didn't get like all the money out, out right? It was in, in investments, it was in, and so on. But each of the daughters received $1,000 a day in interest, which today would be about worth $25,000. So she, Catherine Dexel is now in a, receiving $25,000 per day. Um, what's she gonna do with it? You can imagine the suitors that she had, the, the, the young men who wanted a piece of that Drexel family fortune. So what did she do? She had a spiritual director and she mentioned to him on possibly joining a religious order. And he tells her that's very pious, but why don't you go ahead and, and think about it for a little while. 
So she's thinking about this. She's, she's engaged in um, uh, charitable efforts. And in 1887, so two years after her father's died, she travels to Rome and she has an audience with Pope Leo XIII. And they asked him to send missionaries to, the, to help the blacks and to help the Indians in America. And she'd been funding, right? She'd been giving a lot of funding to these schools. And Leo XIII looks at Catherine and says, why don't you be the missionary? Why don't you go and help the Indians? And so that was it. That was the answer she was looking for. And so with her spiritual director's approval, she joined an order of nuns. And then with the help of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, uh, she founds the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. It's a, um, a religious order dedicated for missionary work among the poor and the black Indians, uh, the poor Indians and, and the blacks. So uh, she established schools, convents, and foundations for this purpose, and she lived to be uh, 96 years old. 96! And she spent the whole rest of her life uh, founding these schools and uh, institutions. Let's see, she had, um, by the time of her death, she'd established 145 missions, 50 schools, uh, for, for black children and 14 schools for American Indians, in addition having uh, all these women who had joined her order to staff these missions. What an example, right, by the time she died. And what, what a life. Uh, she was born in 1858. She died in 1955. So ima ima imagine the changes. Uh, the advent of the, the uh, um, oh, airplanes, flight, uh, the automobile. She went, went through World War I. She lived through World War II. She had, was born just after the Civil War had ended, right? What, what an amazing standpoint just from history. Uh, but an even more incredible example to the high society in Philadelphia. And especially all those Protestants, all those non-Catholic Christians, who of them, which of those Protestants gave up a, a billion dollar fortune to become a nun and to work with poor blacks and Indians whom they didn't even think were worth integrating into society. The whole reason that Indians, you read about the, the, the history of, uh, of, of American Indians, you, you, you've heard that term, uh, Indian giver, that doesn't refer to the Indians, that refers to the government. Is a government would make promises and give them land and then take it away. That's what the term means. Uh, the the, the, the uh, black robes, the, the Jesuits would assist the Indians and were out there. The Indians wanted the black robes. They said, we want the black robes, we want the Catholic priests. And the American government said, no, you get Protestant uh, preachers. And the Protestants treated the Indians very poorly. They're like second-class citizens. Uh, the Catholic Church brought the Indians in and said, you need to, be, uh, you need to become just like the rest of us. Uh, that's how, how you get uh, was the, 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 the Mexicans. Mexicans are just Aztec Indians who married with Spaniards. And now you get a whole new, new race out of it. That's how the Catholic Church treats people. You're just like the rest of us. You're one of us. You have dignity. You have value. Uh, and we, we want, we want to, to, to uh, raise your dignity. So th th that's what happens, you know, when the Catholic Church evangelizes. And, and that's what Catherine Drexel did for Philadelphia, is she showed people this is how the Catholic Church loves. We love like Christ. We love with the heart of Christ. And this is what you do. You give up worldly uh, belongings, possessions. You give up everything, and you follow Christ, right? So it shocked social circles, uh, but in a good way, right, in a very good way. That's what the Catholic Church always does. And 100 years, over 100 years before it was fashionable, she was involved in racial justice, social justice, which we hear so much about these days. Even St. Casimir, right, back five, six hundred years ago, uh, was, was a conscientious objector, right? All those things in vogue right now in the world and society, which, and they're doing it completely the wrong way, uh, this is what the Catholic Church has always done and will continue always to do the right way, is, is not giving people money or giving people handouts, but teaching people how to be virtuous, Right? That is the virtuous thing, is to teach somebody their dignity, their value, uh, their worth, and then, and then instruct them about Christ and enable themselves. Right? They got themselves out of poverty. They weren't given a handout. They weren't taken out by somebody else. It was Christ. Right? They followed Christ, and he brought them out. So, um, you know, a wonderful, wonderful saint, St. Catherine Drexel, an incredible example. This is how America, by the, by the time of the 50s, was, was, um, was predominantly Catholic. The, the largest religious population was, was Catholic in the United States, the largest denomination. I don't know if it's that, that anymore. I think it may still be. But the second largest denomination in the U.S. is former Catholics, fallen away Catholics, the second largest. Uh, so we really could use the help of St. Catherine Drexel these days. Uh, another uh, great example, um, uh, but, but God will always do that. He will always raise up saints in his church, right? Be they princes, kings, uh, uh, the, the daughters of billionaire uh, investment bankers, saints will be raised up. 
Uh, maybe we're not, we, we, we're not going to be one of them on the surface, but underneath, who knows, right? Maybe we are that, that uh, assistance, that example that enables somebody else to, to leave behind everything and to follow Christ, right? Maybe be a, a, a Carmelite nun or, or who knows. Uh, but God will always raise up saints. He always wants to give grace. Let's do our part, right? Saying our prayers, receiving the sacraments, good holy communions, a mental prayer, uh, that can make all the difference. So uh, St. Casimir, St. Catherine Drexel, pray for us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.